In this video, I'm at the East Kent coast at Woolmer. I'm fishing at Woolmer Castle, which is halfway between Cecil Road at Kingsdown and the flats at Woolmer. I've cast out a short wire boom rig for scratching and hoping that there might be some dabs about. I've assembled my second rod and I'm now attaching a long snood two hook loop rig. Shortly, I'll describe how I make these, but if you're only interested in the fishing, then do by all means to get through that bit. The timestamp for the loop rig tutorial is in the description below. As is often the case, I get a bite while setting up the second rod. Suspecting it's a whiting, I'm in not too much of a hurry to deal with it. The tide is coming in, so I haven't set up too close to the water's edge. As expected, it is a whiting and I'm thinking this is going to be a busy session and I'll be looking at approaches to try and catch something different. However, I won't go as far as fishing massive baits on large hooks to try and avoid these, nor will I be live baiting one since I think it's probably a bit late in the year for bass here now. Having returned that whiting, I'll quickly run through the locational details. The map highlights some familiar venues within the regional setting then homes in on the Deal and Woolmer area. Woolmer is pretty much the southern part of Deal and its beaches are pretty much a continuation of the open stretches at Kingsdown further south. It's fairly similar to fishing at Cecil Road but without the prominent chalk hard ground. Further to the north you've got Sandwich Bay and Sandown Castle and the Deal stretches. For this session I've parked in the Woolmer Castle car park which is free if you're an English Heritage member otherwise it would cost you £3 for the day. There are two other car parks you can use but the beach in front of this one tends to be a little bit less busy. So I'm not fishing directly in front of a castle, but a little bit further north towards the flats. I'm just using lugworm, which has dug the day before, and to begin with, my boom rig is attached to a 5 ounce flat lead. This proved to be a mistake, as you'll see later. I'll be casting around the boom rig and at times letting it drift a bit, trying to see if I can find a flatfish. I'm selecting the smallest lugworms to put on size 4 hooks. At this stage I'm not casting out that far so I don't need to walk down to the water's edge. My little blue bucket contains the small lugworm and those which are broken. The larger ones are in the larger collapsible bucket in about an inch of water. These will be used on a loop rig either singly or doubled up. The loop rig I'm using here has got two snuds. The lower one is panelled with a 1.0 and a size 1 hook, while the top snud just has a single hook and that's a 1.0 Nordic bend hook. I carry loop rigs in different configurations, with and without beads. The one I'm using today has beads on the lower snud and both snuds are fairly long at about 85cm. I also make them with shorter snuds and two up one down versions. A lot of my loop rigs have larger 2.0 or 3.0 hooks on the lower snud for fishing with baits like crab or squid but today I'm only going to be using lugworm so the hooks are smaller. These rigs act like a one up one down flapper but with the added advantage of being able to clip up to get that extra distance. So today I'm going to be using them at long range with the hope of being able to pick up a couple of better quality fish. They are my normal go-to rig for this stretch and at Kingsdown.
clipped up and ready to cast, I make my way down to the water's edge to try and gain an extra few yards. I'm just checking that the lines haven't crossed before putting my rod down on the tripod. A quick look at the two rigs I'm using today before demonstrating how I tie up my loop rigs. If you're only interested in the fishing session then scroll forward to about 16 minutes. So here are some of the loop rigs I make up. The one in the middle has snuds made of braid and that's for fishing for place when there's too many spider crabs about. Here I'm focusing on making standard rigs like the one on the right. The one on the left is a two up one down version with shorter upper snuds. Hook choice depends on type and size of bait you're using. For large worm baits I like a large Nordic bend hook and a size 2 or size 1 crab hook if I'm panelling it and some tubing helps here. In pointing out the other components the cascade swivel is used on the lower snud just behind the hook length. The 4 or 5mm beads are used on a body line either side of the swivels for the snuds. The lower one held in place with crimps and for these rigs I like to use imps to attach to the lead since that allows you to use a variety of lead types. I'm using 26 pounds stern for my hook lengths so I'm also cutting a few lengths to use for stop knots. Some anglers prefer to use power gum for this purpose rather than mono. The Gemini clip is used to attach the finished rig to the swivel at the end of my leader line. Here's a list of components I'll be using. I'm starting with the lower snud so I'm making up a hook length of about 20 centimetres of 26 pounds stern. A piece of tubing is used to help secure the smaller hook in the panel setup. You don't want this too long as you only want it for the shank of a hook. When fishing you'll quite often lose the tubing at some point in the session. If this happens and you do lose it then you just put a few turns of a hook length around the shank of a hook like I'm doing now. So you don't really need a tubing but I just find it's a little bit neater when you do use it. I tend to use uni knots to attach my hooks to my hook lengths, but others will swear by tucked half blood knots. I like to snip off a tag end, but some anglers will keep some of it in place, thinking that it's going to prevent the worm sliding down the shank of your hook. A cascade swivel is tied onto the other end of the hook length. The line for loop needs to be fairly stiff and I go for 30 pound amnesia for this. I like to use black but the colour of the line doesn't matter. I cut off 65 centimetres. This is then tied to the large eye of a cascade swivel making the lower snud about 85 centimetres in length. With the line being black it's easy to see how the uni knot is formed. Three turns is enough and I'd normally wet the line with saliva before putting the knot tight. A size 4 swivel is then attached to the other end of the line.
With the lower snood finish, I then work on the upper one. I first cut a bit of line for a stop knot, which I then tie onto the line used for the hook length. This again is 26 pounds stern in this case. Place the line against the hook length, form a loop and then put the end through the loop three times and pull tight. There are other ways of tying stop knots but this works for me. I then thread on a holographic sequin that acts as the bait stop before tying the hook. You could incorporate beads before the sequin or instead of a sequin. And this could have also been done on a lower hook length before tying on the cascade swivel. I'll speed up this bit but once again I'm using a uni nut to tie on the hook and then all the tag ends are cut off. Once that's done I measure out the hook length to be about the same length as the lower snood, 85 centimetres or so. If I was making a two up one down version instead of a two long snood loop rig, then my upper snoods would be 40 centimetres or possibly 50 centimetres in length. The snood dimensions aren't set in stone and over time, in making lots of these and using lots of these, you'll work out what's best for you. A size six swivel is tied to the loose end of a top snood. For the main rig body line, I go for 50 or 60 pound and I cut 125 centimetres for this. If you're fishing where there's lots of snags, you might want to go heavier than that, 70 or 80 pound. In assembling the rig, I start with the lower snood end. First, by threading on a crimp, followed by a bead, followed by the swivel of the lower snood, followed by another bead and then yet another crimp. I then tie on a breakaway imp which will be used to attach the lead to. I cut off a tag end then move all the other components down to about 10 centimetres away from the imp. Hold those components together with one hand and then with a crimping tool or just an ordinary pair of pliers squeeze the crimps down. You've got to be careful not to press the crimps too hard otherwise you'll damage the body line and it might break at that point. I like to have all of these components close together but not too tight that they're crashing up against the swivel. When this is done, I like to see how this all hangs when the lower hook is put into the imp. When finished, the hook of a top snood will go into the bend of a cascade swivel. To secure the top snood onto the rig body line, I much prefer to use stop knots rather than crimps. This allows you to make adjustments to the snood lengths whilst fishing. For example, if you're not seeing your bites, you may want to shorten them or you might get one of your hook lengths bitten off by a spider crab. You may need to replace your top snood and facilitate some adjustments by moving your stop knots down your rig line. You can't do this if you're using crimps. So I've tied a stop knot towards the end of a rig body line and will adjust its position after I've put on the top snood. A bead is threaded on, followed by the swivel of a top snood, then another bead then you need to tie another stop knot to keep all of that in place. Tying on a genie clip finishes off the rig and allows me then to attach that to my leader line. All of the tag ends are snipped off, then the last thing you need to do is be able to check to make sure that everything's in place. I put the hook of a top snood into the cascade swivel and then the bottom hook of a lower snood into the imp. Keeping everything tight, 
I feed the line through my thumb and forefinger on my right hand until I get to where the top snud meets the body line. You will then see what adjustments you need to make to the position of those stop knots. I then move them accordingly and if I find that they are too loose I can always tie a couple more either side. The rig is now finished, perfectly adjusted and ready for use. I attach a lead and check once more that no further adjustments are needed. Here's this actual rig, baited up and ready for use at Dungeness. But that's with Lug and Squid and features in my next video. So it's back to the session at Warmer Castle. I'm still making sure that lines aren't crossing. The last thing I want to happen is to pull one rig over the line of the other rod. My boom rig is drifting because the lead hasn't got wires but it also allows me to drag it now and again. And by dragging the rig, it gets the attention of more fish. I've only just sat down and the rod tip's nodding quite dramatically. As I'm winding in, the same thing's happening on the other rod. Another whiting on the bottom hook. A whiting on the bottom snood of a loop rig and because I've left it out there for a little bit longer than I would have liked the fish has wound itself round the body line of that rig. Rig sorted out, rebaited and clipped up for recasting. Even with double lugworm on the snoods the rig is still very streamlined and casts a long way. I actually think it casts further than a free hook clip down rig. You can make loop rigs with even shorter hook lengths and by using Gemini flat top leads you can tuck the baits in right behind the lead and that's even more streamlined for extra distance. The loop rig's probably gone over 100 yards but I'm casting the boom rig about 50 or so. Occasionally I drop it shorter and at other times I whack it out as far as I can get it. A few tentative bites at distance which I don't strike into but then something a bit more confident.
and it's my first double shot of the session, but still only whiting. The tide's now halfway up and I'm getting regular bites and there are other angles who've set up to my left, closer to the flats. It's a steady stream of fish now, but still only whiting. putting double lug with one in the hope of trying to attract something a bit bigger but unfortunately it's still only picking up those whiting I've changed rig over to one without beads as the water's quite coloured and I don't find the beads that effective when it's like this Knocks on the other rod are distracting me from baiting up the loop rig. That's another double shot of whiting.
smaller hooks mean smaller baits, but you can still do something slightly different. In my little bucket I have got a few small white rag and I'm tipping off my top bait with a white rag. The tidal pool's picked up a bit now and there's a greater bend in my rod tips. My boom rig is now drifting even further to my right. Unfortunately, the inevitable happens and my boom rig has drifted into some snag. I can't budge it, so eventually I have to pull for a break. I should have changed the flatbed over to one with wires a lot earlier. So instead of another boom rig, I'm setting up one of my sole rigs. This one has three short snoods. It's now the top of the tide. I've moved my gear up the beach a little bit, but I've still only had whiting. As it starts to ebb, the tidal pull is still strong, I'm still getting plenty of bites. Thank you. 
Here, I thought I had a decent fish on, but it just turns out to be a triple shot of whiting. All triple shots follow, and eventually I'll get something different in the form of a pelting. So not quite the session I would have liked, but nevertheless, I still ended up with 36 whiting and 2 pelting. No dabs, codding or dogfish, but at least I was out and enjoying myself. <laughs>